depending on when this video is uploaded, uh, it might be Christmas time, so I'm gonna make maybe more upbeat. Hopefully it's not like a different order. <laughs> that would be awful. But yeah, I will just tell you running a local game store to support Magic players is very difficult. I just read you a Houston community thread where people felt feel very upset. They feel incredibly upset that a store, which they named, they didn't name by name, but they named it by location, which is just as bad. Anyone can figure it out. There's not that many stores and there's only one store in that location they named. Um, number one, I don't understand why you have to put them on blast. If you don't want to shop there, if you don't want to pay $5 to play Commander FNM and get a promo that's less than $5, then hey, you don't need to shop. You, like he said, you got four other shops you can go to that don't charge that amount of money. Uh, calling them out in a very public fashion is, uh, especially I think they post on this uh, Facebook, so they've seen it is uh, not really in the Christmas mood, I believe. But that's what we're dealing with right now. We're dealing with magic players. So number one, double whammy, Amazon is selling boxes for $72. The cheapest I can get a box for my distributor is 90. There's an $18 Delta. And of course, Amazon is free shipping and stuff like that. And it's not just, you know, Neon Dynasty, Streets of Campena, it's Dominaria at 80, right? Uh, they're doing collector's editions of Dominaria, collect Crimson Vow, and whatever you want. You name the price for Crimson Vow. So number one, your game store is losing money from buying from distributors. That's the honest to God truth. I've actually looked at this model. What if I drop my distributor for Magic and I just buy from Amazon? Like if I buy for Amazon $72 a box and I sell for 90, which gives me an $18 margin, which is crazy, and 90 is uh, what every game store buys at essentially today, then I would have a monopoly in Houston, right? If I, if I, if I was the only one doing this, <laughs> again, again I, I was the only one who made the connection that wait, I can just buy from Amazon for 72, all my competitors are buying for 90, if I sell it for 90, wouldn't I have like a monopoly? Again, it's not the newest, I mean, it's not Brothers War, but it is Dominaria United. So it does, you know, maybe we'll get Brothers War, I assume maybe a month from now after all is one releases, then they'll throw up a sale in Brothers War. That's what they do. The reason that we have a sale in Dominaria United right now is because Brothers War came out. So it kind of, you know, it's very cyclical, right? It's very predictable. And so number one, you're not making a lot of money buying and selling boxes of, ran of random stuff your distributor has. Number two, and I think this is most important to understand, is the singles, and you're never gonna have the cheapest single price compared to online. You're never gonna have the best inventory compared to online. Just when you compete against every single store online, that's every bloody store online. There's no way you come on top maybe like once a month you you come in the top 10 for one card or if you really have like a lot of that card and you want to move it but for the most part you're not going to be able to get the best deals on singles and with today's delivery and the speed and so on after christmas time they're going to you're going to be able to buy singles cheaper with a better diversity of them meaning instead of buying if you weren't wanting to make an edh deck i would never suggest going to your local game store to make it because they probably don't have these like 25 cents, 50 cents cards that you actually need to make the deck. Uh, but online, hey man, Card Kingdom, you can probably make any deck. They have a very vast inventory because they have a lot of money in uh, inventory. And so that's number one. The problem is game stores are not making money from Magic. And the second problem is the players. Um, I know a lot of people won't talk negatively about this, but you know, I just read you a friend. Uh, you can go on and check it out right now where a guy refuses to pay $5 and not only does he refuse, I, I get it. Hey, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But that's not where magic players are. Magic players love making, putting people publicly on blast. I get uh, angry phone calls from Alpha Investments or people pretending to be him every day. I put it in the Discord channel in case you guys want to take a listen. I'm going to probably put them all just to save them and then throw the number. Uh, no, number is probably not real. It's probably a proxy number. But when you upset them, they feel like, you know, so it's like a different type of business model. 
Um, in many businesses, like if I were to, you were to eat at a restaurant and you had a, uh, no, maybe not the best experience, maybe it was overpriced, you wouldn't you know, try to destroy the restaurant. You wouldn't go on a Facebook thing and then just shout out the restaurant, and, oh, they all charged me over $5 for this. But for Magic, we're talking about $5 entrance fee to join FNM to play Commander for what's likely probably five or six hours for less than a dollar an hour for the heating, for the ambiance, right? You know, when you sit at a restaurant, a lot of the money that you're paying for, especially in nice restaurants, is the decorations, and somebody gotta pay for that stuff. You know, it, it, it wasn't like, oh, hey, this restaurant came with free decoration. No, it was the ambiance, it was the decorations, the LEDs. If you've ever eaten at a nice steakhouse, you know um, that the training of the server and everything com comes, comes into play of why is this such an expensive experience it's not just the food. If you wanted to eat some Wagyu, you could just buy from uh, Costco. Costco now sells Wagyu. Okay, great. But it's really the restaurant experience, right? That you're paying for the premium price. Now, a lot of Magic players, and especially in Houston, they don't wanna pay for the experience. They don't wanna pay. They feel like they're so important to the game store that he has four or five more game stores he could go to. But what makes them unique is they will leave hateful voice messages. They'll leave, you know, I can play you a bunch of them that they feel like their voice needs to be heard. Like, you know, in Reddit or something like that. When in other situations, it's not even that like, why would you waste your time doing that? Like, it's so crazy to me having owned a game store um, that, you know, <laughs> how can I explain it? When people buy Pokemon cards and they don't get a good hit or when they're just like hanging out, it's a very different atmosphere. It's a different ambiance than when people buy magic cards. People buy magic cards, they're always expecting to make money from opening packs. They're always expecting to make money from FNM. They want the game store to provide free pizza and free drinks. And if they have to pay, if they have to lose $5, which is what they're in their mind, you're losing $5. They will drive and waste five more ga dollars of gas to get to a different place. You haven't really seen the mind because it's $2.50 back and forth, right? So it's a gallon, uh, maybe two gallons both ways, right? At two fifty dollars a gallon, which is pretty cheap. I have never seen that before uh, in Pokemon. I've never seen that before in Inuyasha or any other card games we carry or in anime figures. You know, sometimes when you sell like very nice anime figure like Poison Ivy, there was a uh, owner of a store that I that wanted to buy the Poison Ivy, but we couldn't agree on a price. It's still very amicable. And we're talking about a $900, $1,200 figure. And we just kind of reached the price and I, I understood why he had wanted his price. He understood why I wanted my price. Hey, you know, Good luck finding the figure. And I, when I mean that, it's a very easy negotiation. It's very, even if it, the negotiation doesn't get done, both parties feel like we've been respectful. We both understand where we're coming from and just, you know, maybe we'll do a deal in the future. For this, it's like, what type of deal can you make with a guy who doesn't want to pay $5 for the F and M? Like there, there's nothing to be gained. There's your store. Let me let me let me just put this. A lot of people are misunderstanding that they think the five dollars is a lot of money to the store, and the five dollars keeps the store open. It doesn't. When your rent is several thousand dollars, and when your inventory is dying on the vines, if you, if you will, five dollars. That's what one pack, maybe two of your if you're buying bottle skate. Like. When you buy a $5 pack of Damian United from Target or Walmart, a sleeve pack, right? Trust me, you're not gonna be able to play at that Walmart and Target. That to Walmart and Target is such a tiny, tiny percentage of how much they've sold that day. When you buy a pack from your local game store, that could, depending on if there was a new set, when it was leased and so on, that could be a huge percentage. So stop talking about the money, talk about the percentage. So $5 is both a ton of money to some a local game store and also a very little amount of money to somebody like Target. 
as a percentage of what they're selling because obviously Target sells more than cards. Support your local game store or they will stop supporting you. And I think when people actually need to do the math, I advise every local game store to look at Alpha Investments model and copy it. You don't need for a play group there, but the, the play group, Alpha Investments sells more to your play group than your play group buys from you today. Because he has better, not, I mean, he used to have better prices, but he has okay prices. And at the end of the day, it's YouTube baby, right? It's all about influencers. It's all about personality. It's all about this. If somebody watches a YouTube person, they like them, they're going to buy from them, even if it costs more. That's not true for a game store. This guy will turn on his game store for $5. And not just him, a bunch of people in the comments support what he's saying. This is why I do not open my store to Magic players. If you're a Pokemon player, come by. If you're a Magic player, no. I'm good. You, you keep your $5. I'm good. And I'll keep my toilets clean. <laughs> Bye, guys.